if you're watching this video, then you likely either have a minor or a major interest in finding games. Regardless of whichever category you fall into, I'm willing to guarantee at least one thing. You know this man. Ryu is a character that needs no introduction. The protagonist of the Street Fighter series, Mr. Fighting Games himself. This video series and the games we're in would quite literally not exist if not for this character. If Fighting Games had an ambassador, I think everyone would generally agree that Ryu would fit the role. Orphan as a child, Ryu was found and raised by Goken, who also trained him in the ways of martial arts. A bit later on, Goken would take in the son of his best friend to train alongside Ryu, Ken Masters, forming a rivalry and friendship that continued well into the adulthood of both men. Ryu, after being sent out into the world by Goken to travel and test his skills, enters a tournament held by Sagat. During the climax of their fight, Ryu hits Sagat with an incredibly strong Shoryuken, scarring him and leaving him swearing revenge on Ryu. Over the course of the series, Ryu would find himself battling internally with the Satsui no Hado, a power fueled by negative thoughts and desires inherent to the human spirit that brings out a warrior's most murderous inhibitions to the forefront. Characters like Akuma would try and tempt Ryu into giving into the power as he did, and others like Bison saw things as an opportunity to acquire a powerful new vessel. We'd see several what-if scenarios in various games showcasing what would happen to Ryu if he fully gave into the power, usually in the form of evil Ryu, though come Street Fighter V, we'd get a canonical take on the matter with the introduction of Kage. By the events of Street Fighter 3 and now Street Fighter 6, Ryu seems to have found peace as a warrior and still strives to grow ever stronger. In the Versus games, Ryu is about as basic as it gets, and like nearly every other game he's been in, this is by design. Ryu's moveset is the basic foundation by which most fighting games are based off of. If a fighting game character has a projectile, an anti-air, and a horizontally traveling move, chances are, they're inspired by Ryu. Hell, if you look at Spider-Man and Captain America's movesets, they're even somewhat Shoto-inspired themselves. Being that Ryu has rightfully been in every game in the Versus series, this is gonna be a long one. Perhaps maybe even the longest ever in Capcom vs. Legacy. So let's jump into things while we're still young. Ryu's first appearance in the Versus series was as a headlining character in X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Before we move on, let's talk a little about something interesting the Versus games do. Street Fighter characters are pretty strong, but when you're putting them up against the likes of comic book superheroes and villains, if you leave them as they are, they're not going to measure up. So to bring the Street Fighter cast up to the levels of the comparatively wilder Marvel movesets, they power scale the Street Fighter characters upwards. Ryu Shinku Hadouken special goes from a modest, multi-hit fireball to a full-screen beam attack that made Goku proud, while Chun-Li's Kikosha goes from a forward-facing multi-hit fireball to a giant spear of death, and so on and so forth. So with the Street Fighter characters, it's fun to see the ways both big and small that they buff these characters. Ryu's theme here is an arrangement of his iconic Suzaku Kazu theme from Street Fighter 2. Being the first Versus game, X-Men vs Street Fighter is also the first game in the series to utilize dynamic character themes. If a character is KO'd, their partner will dramatically tag in alongside their theme music backing them up. As a dorky kid that always loved little aesthetic touches like these growing up, this more than anything is what caught my attention. One of my fondest memories growing up was watching an older relative play this game that I was seeing for the first time. The computer had beaten their Wolverine and Ryu jumped in the frame with this incredible rendition of the Street Fighter 2 theme playing in the background to save the day. It was, it was like some shit out of wrestling or something, man. Silly as it is, that singular moment left an impression on me and solidified my interest and eventual love for this series. X-Men vs Street Fighter Street Fighter remixes particularly stand out to me because a good chunk of them take what was the climax of their original incarnations and instead make them the intro for the new arrangement, just for the purpose of getting the player as hype as humanly possible. The vast majority of X-Men vs Street Fighter soundtrack was done by composer Yuki Iwai. If some of the instrument choices in this game sound vaguely familiar, particularly the guitar sample, it's because EY used those house Capcom samples pretty liberally in other games she worked on, 
most relevantly as the main composer of Mega Man X2. She'd go on to work on several other Capcom games such as Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, Street Fighter 3 New Generation, Street Fighter Alpha 3, and Spawn in the Demon's Hand before leaving the company in 2000 along with her husband, Takayuki Iwai, a fellow Capcom composer. Ryu goes through three voice actors over the course of the Versus games. His first voice actor in this game is Katashi Ishizuka, who also provided his voice in Street Fighter Alpha 1, 2, and Street Fighter EX. Ryu's sprites and overall design in the early Versus games were lifted from the Street Fighter Alpha games, which were then concurrently running alongside the Versus games. First, let's go over his command normals. First is Collarbone Breaker, his standard overhead done with forward and medium punch. He first got this in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Next is the Senpu Kyaku, or Hop Kick as it's sometimes called in English, done with forward and medium kick. This one originates from Street Fighter Alpha 1. Next is the Hadoken. Need I say more? Next is the Shoryuken. Rounding out his special moves is the Tatsu. As mentioned earlier, Ryu's Shinku Hadoken sees a big upgrade in this game, turning into a full screen beam super. Ryu's Tatsu Super also gets an upgrade as well, done with a quarter circle back and two kicks. The Super itself originates from Street Fighter Alpha 1. X-Men vs Street Fighter only has two colors for each character. Here's what they look like. And here's Ryu's ending. Next up is Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter. This game is a pretty odd duck in the series, arguably the oddest one before Marvel Infinite rolled around, but it's not a bad weird so to speak. All of the stages in the game are reused from X-Men vs Street Fighter, and with the exception of Norimaru, every character sprite is repurposed from X-Men vs Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes, or Street Fighter Alpha 2. However, one of the most interesting things this game does is come up with a suite of completely original character themes for the Street Fighter characters. While the Marvel cast, on Cyclops and Wolverine, get arrangements from either Marvel Super Heroes or Children of the Atom. Like his X-Men vs Street Fighter theme, I love the dramatic intro. It really sets the tone for the match. Katashi Ishizuka reprises his role here, though he only has a few new lines, as most of Ryu's in-game dialogue is just archive audio from the previous game. With that in mind, there's actually not all that much to talk about here. Ryu is still largely based on the Alpha games and retains all of his command normals and specials from X-Men vs Street Fighter, though he does receive an important new one, Shinshiryuken, which debuted in Street Fighter 3 New Generation. This game is also important for being the first in the series to implement the assist mechanic, where you can call upon your teammate for a quick attack. This would go on to become an essential part of the series' identity and be a big part of defining the Versus game's emphasis on team building. Ryu's assist in this game is the Hadouken. Like the previous game, Ryu only has two selectable colors. Here's his first, and here's his second. And finally, here's his ending.
The last two games had pretty faithful interpretations of Ryu, but his most interesting incarnation in the series by far is in Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. For one, while he's still using an edited version of his Street Fighter Alpha sprite set, Ryu actually seems to be something of a loose mishmash of his Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 3 design. He has the brown hair and red headband from a Street Fighter 2 design, but his ending seems to place him somewhere during or after Street Fighter 3, seeing as how he already knows Sean, who appears to be about the same age as he is in Street Fighter 3. Ryu's theme is also interesting. Instead of being another remix of the Suzaku Castle theme, Ryu's theme, as if to present himself as the face of Street Fighter, is an extended arrangement of the Street Fighter 2 intro theme. Out of all the themes he's had in the Versus games, I think this one is arguably the smartest inclusion. When you hear a Street Fighter 2 theme, the first thing you think about is arguably Ryu himself, and that's by design. But when you hear this theme, you're likely to think about Street Fighter on the whole, which is also likely the intent. Interestingly enough, Ryu in this game is voiced by Toshiyuki Morikawa, who, if you've been keeping up with this video series, provided the voice for Hayato in his home series and Marvel 2 as well as Tekken Man Blade in his home anime and Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. Morikawa at this point in time was Ryu's new official voice actor, portraying him in Street Fighter Alpha 3 as well. Ryu's moveset is largely the same as the last game, though he does have a new bigger Hadouken sprite, which is neat. But if we're talking about Ryu in this game, we have to talk about what makes him so unique here, his complete change mechanic. For the cost of one bar, doing a half circle back motion and pressing a punch button, will have Ryu change his form depending on which punch button was pressed. If you press medium punch, Ryu transforms and gains Ken's moveset. Press heavy punch and he gains Akuma's moveset instead. If you're in any of these forms and wish to become regular old Ryu again, do the half circle motion but press light punch instead. And Ryu doesn't just get their hyper combos. He gets their command normals, their throws, their special moves and their unique properties. For all intents and purposes, Ryu becomes either Akuma or Ken. This was probably largely done to keep both Akuma and Ken playable in the game in some form, despite those characters not appearing in the playable capacity themselves. Around this time in Capcom's arcade development, they were starting to brush up on the upper limits of memory they were able to use for their CPS2 arcade games, with Vampire Savior, the third Darkstalkers game, being the biggest example of compromises being made. Capcom would release two separate offshoots of Vampire Savior, Vampire Savior 2 and Vampire Hunter 2, each with their own balance changes and each with their own specific rosters. If I had to guess, I imagine Complete Change Ryu was essentially a more elegant compromise to avoid the Vampire Savior situation. It does help that most Shodos have pretty similar sprite sets. Let's begin with his Ken form. First up is Ken's Inazuma Kick Command Normal. Next is Ken's Hadouken. Like in Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, this travels a set distance depending on the strength of the punch button pressed before dissipating. The Aryu version travels downwards at a diagonal angle just like in previous versus games when used by Ken as well. Next is the Shoryuken, complete with Ken's signature flames. This form also gets access to Ken's ascending Tatsu as well, with the button strength dictating how high he goes. His first hyper combo is the Shoyu Repa, which debuted in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Next up is Shin Ryuken. Ken first got this in Street Fighter Alpha. Last but not least is Shippu Jinra Kyaku, which debuted in Street Fighter 3 New Generation and came to the Versus series as a hyper combo for Ken in Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter. You've probably seen this attack in a certain other video as well. Let's go on over to Akuma next. Like with the Ken form, Ryu gets access to Akuma's entire kit, including his overhead command normal. And the Senpu Kyaku command normal he shares with Ryu. He also gains Akuma's trademark teleport. As well as his dive kick. A funny thing a lot of people aren't aware of is that for as long as Akuma's had this in Street Fighter, this attack actually debuted in Children of the Atom, where he was a playable secret character. He retains Akuma's Go Hadouken, complete with a smaller fireball. 
as well as his Gosho Ryuken. And his electric Tatsu. As for hyper combos, he retains all of Akuma's hypers from the previous Versus games, like Masatsu Goshuryu, Masatsu Gohado, Tenma Gozanku, and last but certainly not least, the Shun Goku Satsu. In the arcade version of the game, Ryu as always only has two colors. Here's the first one, and here's the second. However, the PlayStation 1 port of the game, while paired back in a multitude of ways, actually adds two new colors for everyone. Here's his first new color, and here's his last one. Last but not least, here's Ryu's ending. Despite Marvel 2 being easily the most popular game in the series, with only Marvel 3 maybe contending that spot, there really isn't much to say about Ryu in this game. Ryu's design here reverts back to his Marvel superheroes vs Street Fighter incarnation, losing his complete change forms now that Ken and Nakuma were back. His voice clips are archive audio from Katashi Ishizuka instead of Toshiyuki Modikawa reprising the role, though he does voice Hayato in this game. Check out the video of Ahaya though if you haven't already by the way. Shin Shoryuken has been upgraded to a level 3 hyper combo though, and it's also had its damage increase as a result as well. Ryu's assists in this game are predictably his Hadouken, the Shoryuken, and his Tatsu. And here are all of Ryu's colors. I might be off base here, but his final color seems to invoke the color scheme of his original Street Fighter 1 design. Which versus game team listed has not won an EVO championship? Zero and Alex, Sakura, Bison and Blanca, Magneto, Storm and Captain Commando, or Hulk, Sentinel and Hagar? If your answer was option 3, you are correct. Zero and Alex were the Tatsunoko vs Capcom team that won EVO 2010, played by Marin. Sakura, Bison and Blanca, played in A Groove by Kendevu, won Capcom vs SNK 2 at EVO 2004. And Hulk, Sentinel and Hagar was the team of EVO 2015 Ultimate Marvel 3 champion, Kane Blue River. Time for another game being covered here for the first time on Capcom vs Legacy, Capcom vs SNK Millennium Fight 2000. There isn't all that much to say about Ryu here, though there's at least a bit more to talk about than Marvel 2. For one, Ryu has a newly drawn sprite set specifically for these games. It seems to be firmly a higher fidelity recreation of his original Street Fighter 2 sprite. Look at how his hair bounces in his idle animation. I actually quite like the art direction in Tatsunoko vs Capcom in Marvel 3, but I will always and forever love the sprite work from the first half of this series. Ryu in this game is once again voiced by Toshiyuki Modikawa, who also voices him in Capcom vs SNK 2. Capcom vs SNK doesn't use character themes, but instead has stage themes. However, some of the stage themes either sample or are heavily remixed versions of themes from past Capcom games. Ryu actually has three themes. One specifically for matches against Kia. Huh. 
ケートじゃ通じないから本気で行くぜ受けて立とう来い A theme attributed to him called Fist Explosion. And one that plays in one of the game's unlockable stage variants, a laid back house remix of Ryu's classic theme. It's my favorite of the three, and it's one of the best songs in the game. Still has his collarbone breaker and his Senpu Kyaku command normals, though, despite being a four button game like Marvel 2, you initiate them with their respective heavy punch and heavy kick inputs in forward. Because the SNK crossovers are against a set of similarly tuned characters, the over the top nature of the movesets have been toned down back to regular Street Fighter levels, so, no people sized Hadoukens here. Ryu does gain the Shakunetsu Hadouken in this game, though. He first got this in Super Street Fighter 2 New Challengers. The Shakunetsu Hadoken has a pretty funny backstory. It's inspired by an Easter egg in the original release of Street Fighter 2, where Ryu's fireballs actually had a random chance of being colored red. Ryu's Shinku Hadoken is also paired back to regular Street Fighter levels, as well as his Tatsu Super. He retains Shin Shoryuken from previous games, though, in a wacky little twist, he can actually combo into this from a sweep, though it doesn't do much damage. In Capcom vs. SNK Pro, every character has four colors, as well as four unlockable ones. Here are all of Ryu's. Ryu hasn't really changed much from CVS1 in the second game. With the change to a traditional 6 button layout, Ryu finally gets his Solar Plexus Strike command normal, done with forward and heavy punch. He first got this back in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Other than that, he's more or less the same. I know people might be asking, well, what about Evil Ryu? And while I was planning on covering him in this video, I figured between both CVS games and his cameos elsewhere in the series, it'd make more sense to do a dedicated video for him. Especially considering this one's gonna be pretty long as is. Here are all the Ryu's colors in CVS 2. Ryu also has special intro animations with certain characters. Come on! This battle is about to explode! Fight! Fight! Live and let die! Fight! Live and let die! Fight! This battle is about to explode! Fight! The Versus games took a bit of a hiatus after Capcom vs. SNK 2, but came back in full force with 2008's Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, Cross Generation of Heroes, and its 2010 update, Ultimate All Stars. Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, being a Capcom crossover against television superheroes, upped the series spectacle back to Marvel vs. Capcom esque levels, if not higher than before. Ryu in this game is voiced by Hiroki Takahashi, who became Ryu's Japanese voice actor from Street Fighter 4 onwards. 
He remains in the road to this very day, his most recent role for Ryu being Street Fighter VI. Aside from the extra characters, one of the biggest things distinguishing both releases of Tatsunoko vs. Capcom is the music. While the original Japanese release uses dynamic character themes like in the previous Marvel games, the international update uses stage themes instead, as the cost of licensing the Tatsunoko character themes outside of Japan made things prohibitively expensive. It's not all bad though, Ultimate All-Stars has some of the strongest stage music in the series. Ryu's theme in Cross Generation of Heroes is an arrangement of his Street Fighter 2 stage theme. This is hands down one of the most lively, energetic versions of his theme, and I often go back and forth over which one is my favorite of all time between this and the Street Fighter 5 version. Ryu's Tatsunoko incarnation might honestly be one of the most fun incarnations of Ryu to ever grace a fighting game, let alone a versus game. And it's all thanks to Tatsunoko vs. Capcom's Universal Air Dash, which allows nearly every character to double jump and air dash for every jump, greatly improving Ryu's rushdown capabilities. Being a mostly 3 button game plus an assist button, Ryu's normals were made more streamlined and easier to connect to one another, making this one of the easiest pick up and play incarnations of him. He loses the Senpu Kyaku and Solar Plexus Strike command normals he had in CVS2, but he retains his collarbone breaker overhead. <laughs> He also receives a new command normal, done with forward and heavy attack, roundhouse kick. The big three special moves are all here and accounted for as well. Hadouken. Hadouken! 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 Sure you can. And his Tatsu. However, Ryu does get one new move, the Jodan Sogotogeri, a powerful kick done with a reverse dragon punch motion that wall bounces. This comes from Street Fighter 3 New Generation and is sometimes nicknamed the Donkey Kick by fans. Ryu's three main hyper combos return from previous versus games as well. The Shinko Hadouken is now back to being a full screen beam attack like in the Marvel games. His Tatsu Super gets back his increased vacuum effect and does more hits. Fantastic. And Shin Shuryuken is now his cinematic level 3 super, though it should be noted that you can also combo after it if you time things right. <laughs> Ryu's assist in this game is his Hadouken. It looks basic, but this is actually one of the best assists in the game for its speed and utility as an easy, basic, grounded combo extender. Here are all of Ryu's colors in the game. Character endings are another thing that differ a bit between releases of Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. In Cross Generation of Heroes, you first get your standard art stills with dialogue to go along with it, but after that, you also get a short animated epilogue following up from there. In Ultimate All-Stars, the animated epilogues are nixed, but the art stills remain and were redrawn by Yudan Comics, as well as somewhat lengthened a bit to make up for the loss of the animated scenes. These redone scenes are more or less faithful to their depiction in Cross Generation of Heroes, so what I'll do is show the Ultimate All-Stars ending for the relevant characters and then follow it up with their animated epilogue from Cross Generation of Heroes if they were present in that game. That said, here's Ryu's ending.
Ryu lost a lot of mobility when making the jump from Tatsunoko in the Marvel 3, but he got a few new tricks to help make up for it. Along with Hiroki Takahashi reprising his role again, Ryu's English voice actor, Kyle Herbert, reprises his role as Ryu from Street Fighter 4. Like Takahashi, Herbert has more or less become the modern voice of the character, at least in English. Ryu's theme is once again a remix of his Street Fighter 2 theme, but this one is pretty interesting. It has more of a techno flair to it, and unlike most other renditions, this arrangement is played in a key similar to the Alpha 2 version. I'll be honest here though, I'm not a fan of this specific arrangement. It's not awful, and it honestly sounds a lot better during a fight than in isolation, but considering the pedigree of Ryu themes in the series up to this point, it's slightly disappointing. That said, Ryu is pretty similar to his Tatsunoko incarnation in Marvel 3, lack of air dash aside. All of his command normals and specials from that game are accounted for here and largely have the same inputs. His Tatsu super is more or less the same. As is Shin Shoryuken as his level 3. Shinku Hadoken, funnily enough, is the super that's been overhauled the most. On top of the beam being made perhaps the biggest has been in the entire series, Ryu now has the ability to aim the beam in the direction of his choosing by holding a direction during the move's initial startup animation. Pressing up or down during the super animation aims it up and down in real time, while holding up or down during the super flash will aim it straight upwards or downwards. The latter makes for a great OTG hyper combo option for Ryu. In between Marvel 3's original vanilla release and Old Spin Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Ryu picked up some interesting new abilities. First is the Baku Hadoken. This is an invisible projectile that Ryu can charge both on the ground and in the air, and has a large blast radius when detonated. If you mash the special button instead of holding it, you get the Ren Hadoken instead. This fires out a stream of smaller Hadokens. Hadoken! Next up is the Hado Shoryuken. This is a Shoryuken that deals additional hits with projectiles during a Shoryuken. It's somewhat similar to Cyclops' old Gene Splice anti-air from the previous Versus games. Yes. Things get even wilder though. Ryu receives a new install super as well, Hado Kakuse. This gives Ryu an across the board damage buff for a short time, but dwindles his health a bit. Two of Ryu's hyper combos also get upgraded. Shinku Hadoken now becomes Shin Hadoken, dealing more damage and going full screen, but loses some utility compared to Shinku Hadoken. Hadoken! Awesome! Shin Hadoken! Awesome! The Shin version of Ryu's Tatsu Super now has a far larger hitbox, new graphical effects, and deals way more damage. Ryu's assists are exactly the same as they are in Marvel 2. The Hadoken, the Shoryuken, and the Tatsu. Here's all of Ryu's special character specific dialogue. I will surpass the Satsui no Hado. You will feel the pain of the Satsui no Hado. Go for broke. Fight! Lovin wins! I knew your teachings were false. Nice four. Now, let's go! You never stop fighting, do you? Go for broke! Fight! Wins! Your kicks still need practice. Master of the Iron Fist? Show me! Come on, let's see what you've got. Live and let die! Fight! Love wins! So, that was Kunlun's power. Spiders. I hate spiders. You got a black belt and stupid if you think you're gonna beat me. Get ready to brawl! Fight! La Maxima! Your one wins! Huh. I guess that wasn't so scary. 
the Spider-Man interaction in particular is a neat one. It's a reference to the Japanese manual for the Super Famicom release of Street Fighter 2, where Ryu's character profile lists him as disliking spiders. Interesting. Fight like a wild animal. Let's see how his body moves, kid. Ready? Fight! Man wins! When you lost control, you lost the fight. Here are all of Ryu's colors. Color 3 is based off of the Capcom logo colors. Color 5 is based off of Ken. And Color 6 is based off of Evil Ryu. Last but not least, Ryu's alternate costume is his original design from Street Fighter 1. This was also one of six alternate DLC costumes that appeared in both Vanilla Marvel 3 and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Ryu was also one of the only characters to have two entirely different endings between the original Fate of Two Worlds release of Marvel 3 and its Ultimate version. Here are both endings. And finally, we come to the last game in the series as of now, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Ryu goes somewhat back to basics here, but there's a few changes worth talking about. Because the game only has an English voice track, Ryu's sole voice actor in Infinite is Kyle Herbert reprising the role again. Marvel Infinite has a 4 button setup like the last few games in the series, but specifically splits them back into light and heavy punches and kicks, like in CVS 1 and Marvel 2. Unlike Marvel 2 though, mediums aren't implemented as a double tap, but instead as linkable command normals. It's admittedly kind of clunky. Collarbone Breaker gets a perfect attendance award here though. All of Ryu's special moves are accounted for and their inputs are exactly what you'd expect them to be, though Ryu does get one new one. If you do a Hadouken motion, but hold the button, you initiate the Sen Hadouken, a full screen beam attack. It's somewhat similar to Iron Man's Unibeam, but not as fast. Ryu also has two versions of his Aerial Tatsu. There's a traditional version done with the usual input, and he gets a new Aerial version that travels downwards. This one is done with a quarter circle forward movement and kick. <laughs> Jodan Sokutogeli's input is changed from a reverse dragon punch to a quarter circle forward and kick motion. Break it up. Break it up. 
Shinku Hadoken can still be aimed up or down by holding a direction during the super flash, but now it can't be aimed during the super and the downwards version loses its OTG properties. Shinku Hadoken! Wonderful! Maximum! Shinku Tatsumaki is more or less the same. Shinshur Yuken on a surface level looks exactly as it does in Marvel 3. However, when Ryu is at 30% health or lower and initiates a Shinshur Yuken, this happens instead. Ryu visibly struggles with the Satsui no Hado for a bit before conquering it and finishing off the attack, dealing more damage than the original version. It's a really neat detail to have in the game that pretty much skimmed out on them for everyone that wasn't a Mega Man, Avengers, or a Monster Hunter character. Here are Ryu's colors for his initial costume. His first DLC costume is his battle damaged outfit, which was also an alternate look for him in Street Fighter 4. His second DLC costume is Evil Ryu, but this design is pretty interesting. He himself is based off of the Super Street Fighter 4 arcade edition design for Evil Ryu with the hole in his chest. But his purple aura and general color palette is actually specifically lifted from Shinokuma's design in Capcom vs SNK 2. Pretty neat touch, all things considered. Ryu has some extra dialogue with certain characters on the select screen. Ryu taking pictures. Do that after the match. Ryu Captain, let's give it our all. Ryu the power of vengeance is great but dangerous. Ryu, ours is true strength. As well as specific intro and win quote dialogue for certain characters. Don't hold back, Hulk. Unleash your rage. Nobody can stop Hulk. Who will come out on top? Ready. Chun-Li, let's enjoy this street fight. I'd never turn down a challenge from you. Who will come out on top? Ready! You protect the galaxy? Show me how. There's a bounty on my head. You trying to claim it? Who will come out on top? Ready! Again with the spiders? I really hate spiders. So many snacks, so little time. Who will come out on top? Ready! That look. You have the potential to wield the Hado. If there is some way. Ryu's little dialogue with X here is referencing X's ability to unlock the Hadoken in a few of his own games. Fine. As long as I can learn something from this battle. Oh my! What a tasty looking treat! Who will come out on top? Ready! I'll cooperate with you, but just for now. I want you, body and soul. Who will come out on top? Ready! It's an honor to work with you, Captain. Oh my, what a tasty looking treat! Who will come out on top? Ready! Hulk, let's show them what we can do together. I'll take on whoever wants some of this. Who will come out on top? Ready! You can't even trust your own power. That is your weakness. Those who control the stones control the universe. Who will come out on top? Ready! Let's let our fists do the talking. Do you think you can? Ready! I'd almost forgotten this feeling. Here. There is no one above me. Who will come out on top? Ready!
the path Ryu walks isn't an easy one. Every day, he strives to be better and stronger than he was the day before, and this has led him into all kinds of games and crossovers. In a genre where characters can grow increasingly complex even on a fundamental level, it's somewhat comforting to know that even with a few new tricks up his sleeve sometimes, Ryu will always be the go-to pick-up-and-play character that anybody can enjoy. If the Versus series ever comes back, be it against Marvel, SNK, some other company, or even just a Capcom-centric crossover, I can guarantee at least one thing. Ryu will be there. Thanks for watching, and a sincere thank you to everyone that supports this channel. It really means a lot. Take care, and I'll see you next video.